John chapter 3, please. I can't help it. I know I'm a little biased, but I'd rather hear our singers sing than anybody. So anointed. And I know them. I know their life, and that's nice. You can meet people who can sing the greatest in the world. And listen, I, I listen to all kinds of people sing. I listen to Kay Love, listen to Aaron Warren. I mean, Christian music. I listen to Christian music. And you know a lot of those guys are probably not even saved in it for a business. I listen to it for entertainment. But when someone that is living right and is anointed sings, it doesn't just entertain you, it doesn't just make you emotionally a little better. It, and say we reach inside and get a hold of you. And say we make an impact. And that's what I appreciate about holy people singing holy songs. You can get down on in the inside and make an impact. I love each and every one of you. I know that some of you will either slip out here in a little while and maybe you'll be call. And I want to say to you, Merry Christmas. I love you and I love you. Uh, there's not a person in this room that I don't have a great love for. Deep love for it. In so much that if God will allow me and my family, we will serve here the rest of our lives. And that's what I want. That's what she wants. That's what my family wants. I feel something special at Revival Tabernacle. I do. Amen. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. And I believe that I live across this building and I don't know all the stories, but I know a lot of the stories I don't maybe a story about each and every one of you that brought you here. Sure. And the very fact that this group of people is here at this particular time, this moment, together. And this house is unified. Amen. We were talking about that in the end of the Joe. We've there's been some that's left and for good valid reasons and some have backslid, but five years we've Amen. come to a place Amen. where we've defied every odd. This church should have split. How many times, Pastor Greg? Hundred. <laughs> this church should have split. Should have busted. We should have. They ought to be. Don't rock in the jukebox in here right now. Yeah. <laughs> they was going to. The bar was going to buy this place five years ago. That's right. But despite all of that, despite all the attacks of the enemy, here we are. Here we are. And I know maybe a couple of you are thinking, Sam, Pastor, I'm not even saved. I'm lost. Same goes for you. If it hadn't been for the grace of God, Amen. you'd be in hell, in jail, in a hospital, right. and in the same asylum. Amen. And so I don't care who you are. Mercy. If I were you today, I'd find myself a place to pray. Amen. And if you couldn't say anything else but God, thank you for not letting me go to hell. I think that I would do that. Yes, sir. I think I would. John chapter 3, let's go there. Chapter, chapter 3, verse 14. I want to say something. I want to say thank you about something that maybe some of you won't understand. And of course, I can't speak for all of you, but I, I do want to say that I'm thankful for real friends. You know, my wife and I, we went to New York City this past week. And y'all folks will say, where y'all get the money? I sold my library, okay? And we set it aside for that. Okay, it wasn't because we're rich and got all this money. It's just when I set my mind out to do something, that's what I do. And Amen. She wanted to go to Italy. We'll take her there maybe on 20 or 25. We'll have to figure out who that can sell one of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to get 6000 not 60 cents. So we'll see. I don't know. I'll sell a leg or something. And I'll hop to Italy. But um, people were... You guys were excited for us. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate that. Because I'm excited for you when God blesses you. Amen. When I see you coming here with a new vehicle, I don't wish I had it. I don't say, how did they get that? In my heart, not what I say, hoping in my heart, I walk away and I say, God, thank you yes. for blessing your people. Hallelujah. And I've tried to live by that rule. And I really, it, it, it helps to have friends. Is anybody can weep with you, but it's very difficult to find someone that will rejoice with you. Yeah, Amen? Yeah. 
And so I wanted to say thank you for that. I know that's a little weird, but it's not for me. It's, it's nice to have people that love us so much and understand the, the load that we carry. Yes. And it was it was an experience. <clears throat> and I, I have discovered that I really am a black Mexican in a white man's body. <laughs> I'm straight up city student. You know what that My wife, no revelation. She's straight hillbilly. <laughs> with, with maybe no Billy. I don't know. She, she's a country girl, ain't she, baby? So if we can get, well, let's just preach. <laughs> St. John chapter 3. I want to say thank you to Pastor Skaggs. I know he's not pastor now, but my heart is just filled with gratitude. My mother's here. Mama, I love you so much. You're precious to me. I bring up Brother Skaggs because the truth is, if it hadn't been for him and Sister Michelle, I wouldn't be here. I mean, I say that, I don't know. It might have been somebody else, but when I was on the run and didn't have any worse to go, the man of God, you and your family took me and ultimately my wife here and Gave us a place of protection. I just look across the house. I'm not crying. I'm going to preach. But my heart is filled with gratitude for the workers in this church. People like you. That I don't know what I would do without you. I'm, I'm going to stop there for real because I got a story on each of you guys. On and on and on. But um, I need to preach. You got it? John 3.14. Just know that I love you and I thank God for you every day and for whatever you do. It doesn't go unnoticed. And as Moses lifted up the serpent, the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Okay. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. For God so loved the world. Somebody say, that's me. Amen. Amen. That's me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Look at verse 16 again. For God so loved the world that He gave. He gave. God is a giver. And when God wanted to give us a Christmas present, He gave us His Son. That's right. Yes, he Amen. I've gotten some good Christmas presents in my life. When the Father gives a Christmas present, He does it right. For God, the Father so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, somebody say, that's me, believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him, through Jesus, might be saved. Let's pray. Father, we come to You. We know that You are the unspeakable gift. Jesus, we are so humbled by Your presence today. I feel You overwhelming me in my spirit. I look across this house at the leadership of this place. There are men in this house that though they may not be blood to me, they are like that to me. I have friends in this place. My mother is in this house. My wife is in this place. My children are with me. My friends, my best friends are in this house. There are some that would like to be here that were not able to come because of sicknesses and their families and things. We pray for them that you would lighten their load. But God, I come to you with an attitude of gratitude today. I don't deserve you. I don't deserve Jesus. I don't deserve the blood. I don't deserve anything you've ever done for me. Father, I repent for every time this year in the past that I've doubted or had disappointment or been discouraged. Please forgive me, Lord. For, for, I don't want to ever, ever do that again. I want to be focused on You. I want to look on the cross. I want to see who You are and what You've done for me and remember that no matter what, I'm okay because I have You. And I want You to impress that on the people today that we have something that so far out surpasses everything else that we may want and can have that we should never, ever be disappointed or depressed or discouraged again because we have You. And it really is true, Jesus, that when you're all we have, you're all we need. Amen. And so God, do something special today. And I pray for every lost man in this house. Every lost man. <coughs> they're here by divine design. They didn't have to come today, but they're here because you brought them here. They've not confessed their sins. They've not accepted you as their Savior. 
And I pray that today they will do that. And I pray for the saints that are in this house that this holiday season, regardless if they have money or no money, food or no food, presents or no presents, that they can let the light of Christ shine into this world and that we can make an impact on our neighbors and our family around us this year. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. 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 You may be seated. I like getting presents. Don't you all? Amen. Looky here, my baby. There, got me. She's contemplating right now. She's trying to figure out whether I can unwrap them today or if I have to wait till Christmas. Look here. I mean, this whole bag. It's full of them. Oh, someone's not to me. They gave me. Sister Lamb got one. Got me a car. Sister Lamb got two. Pastor. I guess that's fair. Pastor and pastor. And sister and sister. Anyway, I'll set this right here. So, she's trying to figure out what we're going to do with these. I don't do good with my wife. Now, I can get you a Christmas present and make you wait till next year. I don't bother me at all. But if I get my wife something, this is a gospel truth. If I get it two weeks before Christmas... I make up my mind. This has got to be something wrong with me. I don't know. I need to go to a psychologist and figure it out. Honest to goodness, I can get my wife the Christmas present a month early. And I got my mind made up. It's wrapped. Go to Cracker Barrel or something and get one of them little faceless figurines, whatever they're called. Young know, willow trees. Just an example. I put it, they wrap it. I put it in the car. This is going under the tree. And I will. I'll get it under the tree. But there's this weird sensation that takes place inside my heart, my mind. I'm like, man, I gotta no, I can't do that. And it never fails. Before Christmas comes, my wife has opened every present because I take them to all to her. She gotta open it now. <laughs> Is anybody else like that one? You buy your loved one. Isn't it awesome to buy your children a present? And that's one of the things, you know, we talk about Christmas, and I'm doing better. I still don't help the Christmas tree put it up. Until it's my Santa Claus time, I didn't feel like doing that this year. I did put up four or five of them. But I'm getting better. They used to call me Scrooge. They really did. Because I want Christmas to be about what it's supposed to be about. Right. I don't, I don't have any problem with the world making Santa Claus a highlight. Now I told you, I've got my, whole, my Christmas tree, when you see Santa Claus, that's pastor. I got with sunglasses, they're skiing, they're rock and rolling. I got Santa Claus in the whole of my Christmas tree. And I don't think I bought one this year, so I gotta get one this week. I told Sister Alice, I want black Santa Claus. And I'm trying to get Jesus to find me one. All right, she's gonna find me one. Black Santa, I want one so bad, King She got me a car with a black Santa on it, and I just been carrying it around. I've been looking at it. I just love it. Anyway, I like that. But what happens for me, and I'm, I'm trying to change my mentality. What happens for me is I come into the church, and I see Christians celebrating Christmas the exact same way as the heathen do. Yeah. And that shouldn't be because this is a Christian holiday. Right. They got to figure out something to do while we're all partying and celebrating Jesus. So they have all these other things. And I'm not saying I like snowmen. I can't do any pink and rose. It's just muddy out there. That was great. I like stuff like that. Snowball fight. If it snows this year, where's my boys at? It's on. You remember that Nerf guns that I had that you wanted real bad? And I said, if I get one, I'll shoot you in the eye. That's what I'm going to talk about. Snowballs coming in your eyeball. Right there. <laughs> Somebody shout amen on the eyeball. I come into church, and Christmas should be about Christ. Right. Yeah. Amen. You know, if you see Xmas, we get so bad about that. I'm very angry. They've taken Christ out of Christmas. But you know what? A lot of times in our attitude, in our demeanor, in the way we approach this holiday coming, we do the same thing. 
And I want to be careful because probably one or two of you have said this, and I've tried to tell you not to. We said, Pastor, I'm not having Christmas this year. I say, please explain that to me because December 25th is coming. Whether you're here in jail, at the hospital, under your bed so depressed that all you can do is cry, Christmas is coming. It may pass you over. Christmas is coming because Jesus died and we're going to celebrate Christ. I've been saying happy Jesus Jesus. We celebrate Christmas like the heathen do. If I don't get any presents, if I don't get enough presents, if I don't get the presents, I'm going to tell you young people something. Children, listen to pastor. Okay, all of you. I mean, I'm talking about four, five, six, seven, two. Listen to me, young people. Your mamas and daddies work very hard. And this is a season where they're under a lot of pressure and a lot of stress to buy you all these things. And sometimes we can't buy you stuff like you want. And I want you guys to pray for mom and daddy. And I want you to start thinking about all the little ones that don't have anything this year. And whether you get what you wanted to get or not, Whatever you get, I don't care if it's a baloney robe or baloney string. Somebody said baloney string. Floss your teeth and say Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. You young people hear me? Don't put any more pressure on your mom and daddy. And when you get those presents and you start opening them, I want you to be big for Pastor Lamb. I want you to be, I want you to be tough. And if you're disappointed beyond imagination because you just didn't get that thing, I want you to suck it up and don't cry and I want you to go hug your mom and daddy and say thank you because I know you did your best this year. Okay? Would you young people do that for me? Amen. Because I do believe that Christmas is about family. I do think that part of Christmas is eating lots of turkey and chicken and ham. We shall do a jihad on the ham. Candy. Peanut butter roll and buckeye. It's about that. It's also, for me, it's about a Christmas tree. We like that. We have one every year. We have two or three in the church, downstairs, upstairs. We have Christmas trees. We have presents. I'm going to buy my kids presents. They're going to give me something. But that's not what it's all about. And I want us to get that in our heads. Because God so loved the world, He gave us something. He gave us someone. He said, my people are lost. They're separated from me. There's no possibility of any person in this room. There's no Jews in this room. There's, there's white folk and black folk. And I don't know what some of you are. <laughs> but you is. But you're not a Jew. Every one of us was destined for hell. But the Father so loved me. He said, I'm going to send my son. And Jesus loved me so much. He said, here I am. Send me. I'll go. I'll become the spotless lamb. I'll become the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. I will shed my blood so every person in this room could be saved. When God gives a Christmas present, He does it right. I'm going to tell you what else He does. He likes wrapping presents too. You don't believe me? It's going to blow your mind. Not, not the first one. The second one I'm going to talk to you about. Luke 2, 2 and 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Yes! The Father had His perfect Christmas gift wrapped up. The strips of cloth. They just wrapped him up. He was so warm. But there he was. They just peeled it back. And there was God the Son Hallelujah. in a manger. Amen. I'm like Pastor Greg. I don't care if he was in a stable. I don't care if he was in a cave. I don't care if he's in the Taj Mahal. All I care about is that he was. Right. I don't care if it's December 25th, April 14th. If it was on leap year, it doesn't matter to me. If the sun was shining, if it was hot, if it was cold. I don't care. All I care is that he is. Does anybody else feel that way? All I care about is when wise men came, they looked down in a manger and saw the most perfect Christmas present that ever was. And as Mary held him and wrapped in swaddling clothes, it was the perfect gift. What are you going to do with that gift? 
What are you going to do about this season this year? You know what would be awesome? It would be awesome if we were like those wise men. Where they came from? Who cares? How many? Who cares? Does it matter to me? I'm just glad they did. I'm glad we've got the principles behind it. But did you notice that when they come, Jesus didn't give them anything? They brought him something. Uh, wouldn't it be awesome if we could teach our children that Christmas is a season to give? Right. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could teach each other, the adults in this house, this is a season to give. We ought to be blessing. We ought to be outreach. We ought to be to those that are struggling, those that are hurting. We ought to be walking through Walmart. As we go by the gifts for our children, we ought to be looking for people and saying, God, if there's one in this house, in this building today that's struggling, would you lead me to them? And if I can help them in any way possible, wouldn't it be awesome if we could have young people and we could teach our children, my children, like there's a rich man down in Florida who gave a pastor friend of mine a big bunch of money to buy their church. He's paying it back, but he's got a child. And the child said, Dad, I don't want any gifts to this year, I want you to take everything that's coming to me and give it to somebody that doesn't have it. And this man has got millions of dollars and I thought I would love to have my children trained like that. Right. What did you bring him today? I'll tell you the most important thing that you could have brought Jesus today. Come on now. Yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. You. you. I know that you feel like you're not worth anything. I know that in your mind you say, I'm a sinner, I'm lost, I I've got drugs in my veins right now, I'm high right now. Revival Tabernacle, would you let the high and, and the those that are just blown away right now, would you let them know how much we appreciate them being in the house? <laughs> now to eat 17 Kit Kats just to get the alcohol off your breath, we still smell it. And we're still glad you're so here. Amen. Your special guest. Because it was only about 22 years ago I was popping Tic Tacs to hide that stuff on my breath. But you know what? God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son. I believed on him. I unwrapped that gift. And guess what? I inherited eternal life. And because of him, not because of me, not because of what I did, not because of my wisdom or my strength or my power. In fact, it's not by might, not by power. But it was his spirit revealing his son to me that I stand before you right now. I am a walking, talking, living example of the grace of God. I'm not here because I prayed. I'm not here because I was awesome. I'm not here because I love God. I love Him because He first loved me. Because the Father so loved me that He put His Son in a manger and wrapped Him up for me. Somebody shout in there. Yeah. You know what would be a tragedy today? A tragedy, the greatest tragedy that could possibly be, be uh, uh, today that happened today is for a person to come in this room and I'm not just talking rank and file sinners I'm talking to some of you that have been saved but you're not where you need to be and you've allowed a bunch of stuff creep into your heart and your mind and your hands are touching your eyes are beholding and you're doing things you know that's grieving the spirit of God it would be a travesty today for you to come into this church and to feel the spirit of God like I feel it right now and to walk out these doors the same way you can you know what you ought to do you ought to unwrap that gift today you ought to say Father thank you for sending Jesus I'm going to unwrap this day and I'm going to accept Jesus as my Savior I'm going to I'm turning from every sin and I'm going to let him save me. I'm going to let him save me. I preached what was the last Sunday. Bring him your ashes. That messes with us. Because we look in the mirror, we see failure, we see issues, and we say I have nothing to give God. God said I want your ashes.
no bed. It's a manger. It's a trail. Come on, brother. Oh, they fed the cattle out of it. There was no room in the inn. They were too, too busy. Had a lot going on at that time of the year. And everything was packed and there was nowhere to stay. And she's expecting and she ends up in, in, in a stable somewhere, a cave. It doesn't matter. It was smelly. It was nasty. It was filthy. But you know what? It didn't matter to Jesus because Jesus is just that kind of God. He'll go when there's a mess. He'll go where it's nasty. He'll go where you're messed up. He'll go where a little husband walked out on you. Jesus will walk in on you. Come on, talk to me now. I said, God so loved you that he gave you Jesus. He wrapped him in swaddling clothes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this message over. So I'm praying. But I want you to watch something. That says, Jesus is born. He goes 33 and a half years. Brother Greg, it is like. A sledgehammer just wham. The father gave us Jesus. He wrapped him up in swaddling clothes. You remember how he left? They hung him on a tree, nailed him down, crowned with thorns. They took him down off the cross. They wrapped him again. I said they wrapped him again. White linen, laid him in a tomb, put a napkin there saying, it's over, we're done. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. Wrapped him up again because the way he came in is the way he was going out. I wish that you would hear me today. God loves you. He cares about the people in this house. He cares about the saints. He cares about the sinners. And I need you to know that if I don't have a plug nickel to buy anybody anything, I've got Jesus in my heart. I've got a present from the Father that ought to keep you dancing. It ought to keep you leaping. It ought to keep you shouting. If you're here and you're lost, you need to come on down and unwrap this gift. I said you need to come down and let go. You feel like singing Mary, did you know what it means? Awesome. You ready to play? Come. world. I can't go on. 
I can march on. Yeah. If I got to be by myself, I'll be by myself. If I got to fight by myself, I'll fight by myself. If I got to pray by myself, I can. Not because of me, but because of the unspeakable gift that's been placed inside this earthen vessel. Listen to me, saints. There is no reason that we shouldn't be anointed and powerful and victorious. You ought to leave this house today saying, I may not have money, but I am rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I've got him. I've got everything. Amen. Let's worship. Come on, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. We love you. We thank you, Jesus.